Hello and welcome to Friday Night Fright Presents Comic Book Calvacadia 2020. Man, we're going to have some fun this month. Every episode in May, every day in May, there's going to be a brand new episode. It's going to be a mini review of a comic book movie. Yay, can't wait, hyped. So it's going to cover the gauntlet. It's going to be loads of MCU stuff. There's going to be some DC stuff probably. Uh, it might be some other stuff. There's going to be Flash recaps of Flash Season 2 every Tuesday. Um, so it's going to be four or five of those, depending on how many Tuesdays are in May. But it's going to be tight, because I've also got a week off. Yay! Anyway, this is the intro comic for Cavcadia. So you hear this every day of the week, and then you'll hear an intro for the movie and I'm covering that day. Or TV show. Ooh, scary! Anyway, I'll be back after a brief word from our sponsor. <laughs> Hey guys, it's Ian Austin here, and this May 7th episode of Combat Cavcadia 2020, the end of the first week, is going to deal with Iron Man 3, the follow-up to the Avengers, and conclusion of Tony Stark's trilogy of movies, where he went from the man... Iron Man to Iron Man. He went full circle for Iron Man to Iron Man. No, this is the follow-up to the Avengers, and at the time it's quite publicised, because obviously this was the... To see where Marvel could really succeed. I mean, the Avengers made so much money and was so beloved. Now, how do you follow that up? And they managed to follow up with a movie that made lots of money and was reasonably successful. Continuing the theme of Robert Down Jr. being a guarantee of being on box office star, which would not last indefinitely, but would last for a while longer. He was seen as a mega star of epic proportions and this was quite the big movie to end his Iron Man run in terms of solo movie song. It was directed by Shane Black, the man who directed Rob Down Jr. one of his best movies, Kiss Kiss Bam Bam with Val Kimmer, an excellent, excellent movie in Michelle Monhagen, an excellent movie in any regard. And this was all Shane Black's return to big budget movie making. He obviously is the writer of... Um, Lethal Weapon, the writer of Long Kiss Goodnight, um, the writer of Last Boy Scout. And this was his move into really directing his own movies for a big bug audience. Did it work? Well, at the time I wasn't convinced because this movie put me to sleep. But in retrospect, maybe it'd be good after the Avengers. Maybe it works in sequence. Maybe it's like the season two prem phase two season two premiere of Marvel after the big season nine that was the Avengers. Well who knows? At any rate it's time to watch Iron Man Three and hopefully I'll enjoy it more than when I watched it first time and as I just said I first sleep. And at any rate I'll be back off brief words my sponsors. So Iron Man Three then um I can't say I was terribly impressed to be honest. I I think I need to quantify that by saying it's by no means a bad movie. It's technically way made, it's well acted, it's way written. The plot's decent, the twists and turns. <laughs> the chemistry between Rob Dam Jr. as a Tone Stark, a.k.a. Iron Man, and Pepper Potts, a.k.a. Queen of Paltrow, is really good as always. War Machine stuff is good. And generally, it's a nice, witty Shane Black. Movie mixed with Marvel Super stuff. The only problem is it's not very interesting. And that's weird because in theory it should be interesting. The movie deals with the idea that's quite popular in the DC Comics continuity is where of what happens when a tech-based superhero meets aliens, gods, demons and all the like. Well, naturally that superhero would have to be of a breakdown of sorts and crisis of faith because the universe is bigger than ever suspected and with things like aliens and whatnot... What can one man with a tech-based suit do? In this movie, Tony Stark has a lot of anxiety about that because despite the fact that the Avengers portrayed its heroic and rah-rah-rah, he was a human being who had to throw a nuke into space to save New York and destroy an alien army and then they throw a wormhole back to New York and barely saved by a green rage monster yelling at him. That was enough to drive anyone a little crazy. But you can understand why it hit Tony Stark really hard because as we saw in Iron Man 2, Prior to that point, he successfully privatised Way of Peace, and he was the one and done guy. Sure, people like Whiplash would occasionally get a drop on him, but he was a big fish in a big pond. Now he's a small fish in a huge pond, and he's been dwarfed by the achievements of people like Captain America, Hulk, and Thor, who dwarf his power level um, in terms of his personal power level. His suits give him a, a bit of an edge, but he feels quite 
less so for sure than he did. It's a weird thing to see Tony Stark be so anxious and borderline depressed and just terrified, basically. But it's quite a neat bit of character development because it sort of humanises him, hum, yeah, humanises him a little bit. The problem is, as I said before, it's not terribly interesting. The ideas prevalent in this movie were great and the idea of Shane Black to do it in a Kiss Kiss Bang Bang style where it's a witty movie set Christmas as all Shane Black movies are and Rob Down Jr. is most witty and urbane performance levels but something's missing and that something is really cohesion. It's another example of Marvel trying to bridge all the gaps trying to make a Shane Black movie and a Marvel movie that constantly clash with each other certain aspects work those dialogues relatively witty the kid stuff is is cool to see because it's a bit sharper than kid stuff usually is in these sort of movies it's nice to see Tony Stark as a <laughs> I see Tony Stark as a mentor figure. Rob Down Jr. does a really good job with the Hartley scenes. And Pepper Tony stuff is pretty well done at his Gay Friday sort of way. But, I don't know, something really is missing. I don't think it's heart because this movie is heart in abundance. I just feel like it's they couldn't really recontextualize Iron Man the way they wanted to. And I think that's a frustrating part of the three Iron Man movies that They've given Tony Stark more cat development, which is interesting and it's some good stuff and it's some cool stuff, but the movies don't really, especially two and three, they just don't pop the way they should, which is fascinating because this movie made a lot of money at the box office and by all accounts was a smash hit success, so clearly they did something right, but at the same time, doing something right doesn't mean doing something interesting, if that makes any sense. I keep saying the word interesting. I think because the movie doesn't really pop. You could say Captain America, First Avenger and 4 didn't, might not necessarily have popped either, but they seem very distinctive movies. And despite the fact that there's a lot of Shane Blackisms in this movie, it doesn't really crackle the way his best movies do, particularly something like Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, which is fantastic dialogue-wise. This doesn't feel that fantastic dialogue wise and some witty lines and Rob Down Jr. is charismatic and very very good delivery as usual but it doesn't pop you know it just doesn't pop some of the twists are quite cool though Shane Black's really good at reversals which is basically you way you think scenes can go it goes the opposite direction sometimes they work sometimes they don't but in this case a lot of them do the Mandarin for example being revealed as Trevor Slattery an actor is a really cool reversal but here's the fundamental problem and one of the biggest things I find about movie when you realise who the actual villain is he's not very interesting and that seems a disservice to Guy Pearce who's a fantastic actor but this is just a sleepwalk of a role for him there's nothing from really sink his teeth into and it seems bizarre you cast someone as good as Guy Pearce who could have been Iron Man different incarnation and would be perfect play opposite Rob Down Jr and his motivation is crap and his character is pretty shoddy it's almost like Shane Black's trying to overcompensate for how witty and urbane his, all of its characters are by having a character who's not so witty or urbane in um, Aldrich Killian. Other aspects, I mean, just... I think the extremist thing's cool, in theory, um, having another attempt to make super soldiers in Marvel Cinematic Universe and put them against Tony Stark's interesting because it goes to mind... The idea that eventually Tony Stark and Captain America will come blows. And it's I like the idea of a tech-based superpower, and I know it's from comic books, but it's not, again, it's just nothing. The characters don't stand out, the powers don't stand out, it seems vague, it seems convenient, it just doesn't work the way it should. And fundamentally, that's the thing about Iron Man 3, it doesn't... <sighs> Oh, really like truck tonight. It doesn't work where it should. It's not a bad movie. It's watched, but it's decent. But it's not really start of season two of Marvel thing, phase two that you would expect from Marvel. But hey, it did lots of money. Box of box office. So what I know, I'd probably go for 
2.5 out of 5 just because I was nodding off a few times while watching it and I can't say I recommend it. That's higher than the grade I used to give it, which is about 2 out of 5. So it's got 0.5 more because I do appreciate where it builds off the Avengers and I like the idea that Tony Stark is lingering trauma from Avengers because it's fascinating and cool from character development side. And clearly it's going to drive his arc going forward, but yeah, just not. It's just a big bag of nothing for me, really. Anyway, tomorrow... Sorry, I don't know what happened there. Um, Yeah, so tomorrow, May 8th, would be the first pseudo-horror movie of this Marvel Cinematic Universe. 4 2, which I remember being blay off at the time, but maybe it'll be better tomorrow when I watch it. And while well, doing intro for that tomorrow, it's just me signing off saying, Remember, as always, life is beautiful. <laughs>